Most of us grew up with the idea that music was something generally we would buy, be it through buying albums or cassettes, and of course that films are something more often than not we would rent by renting videos first and then of course DVDs. Have you ever imagined though how you could go about getting access to pretty much any piece of classical music played by pretty much any soloist or from your phone? Well today I'd like to show you a couple of options that make this possible. If you're sitting comfortably, then let's begin. This is Tommy's Piano Corner and I'm Tommy, the place for returning pianists or indeed anybody who loves the piano to share some tips and ideas about how we can get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then please do subscribe. All you need to do is click on the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and it's done for you. I've always thought that a really important part of learning piano is also listening to piano. Of course, listening to piano music introduces us to repertoire that we might never have heard of before. Also, when we decide to learn a new piece, it's fantastically useful to be able to listen to a few different versions of it to get a good idea of how it's supposed to sound. And of course, there's nothing as inspiring as being able to sit and listen to such beautiful music played by the world's best pianists. Of course, we have YouTube that helps out with this. There's lots and lots of stuff available on YouTube when you search for it. But quite often the quality is not fantastic if you really want to listen dedicatedly to the music. Records have normally been the way to do this. I mean, I've got some friends who've literally spent thousands over the years creating their music collection, starting with vinyl, of course, I guess moving on to CDs, possibly via cassettes. Then now you've got the new digital formats where you download from the likes of Apple Music and all of these things so you can carry countless amounts of music in your pocket, either on a portable MP3 player that we used to have, and now, going beyond that, it's generally in the software that's on your phone already, so you don't even need an MP3 player. Of course, there's been lots of problems for the music industry with illegal download sites over the years, because people have started to actually prefer this digital way of getting hold of their music quite often. And to keep up with this, what has now started to happen is that you're starting to see subscription services to music appear, whereby you pay a fixed fee every month and then you can just listen to whatever music you want to listen to. Some of the major streaming services on the market that I'm sure you'll have come across come from Apple, from Amazon and also from a company called Spotify. To put them into context, Spotify's probably got 35 million songs on it. Amazon, 40 million or so. Apple say that they've got 45 million songs on. So all together, a lot more music than you'll ever get time to listen to. And there's a good selection of classical music on all of them, it's got to be said. Price-wise, to give you some ideas in US dollars, Apple has a $9.99 subscription for individuals that for $14.99 you can convert to a family subscription for up to six people. Spotify is priced very similarly with the same family and individual options. Amazon's a little cheaper if you're a Prime member in that you can get their service for $7.99 per month. I guess the idea of subscribing to something where you never actually own the end result, especially for music, might seem a bit odd because we're not that used to it. But if you think, we've been subscribing to paid TV services for many years in most countries now, and these subscriptions quite often even include video on demand. So certainly there's something that is definitely worth thinking about. Of course, the difference between buying something and having a subscription is that once you stop paying your subscription, then you can no longer listen to or watch whatever it was you had before. 
But let's put this into a little bit of context. Say, for example, you buy one CD per month or you download one CD per month, say, from Apple Music. These will cost you, what, $10, give or take? So in actual fact, a $10 subscription is really quite good value, considering that now you no longer actually need to buy this album anyway, and you've got into the bargain an almost unlimited music to listen to. However, for classical music, a lot of these mainstream subscription services aren't really that easy to use and to find the pieces of music you're looking for. And the main reason for this is something that they call metadata. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to start trying to blind you with science with what that is. But think of it simply as the ability to search for something by lots of different things. So, for example, in a typical streaming service, let's say you're looking for a song by Adele, then you could just type in Adele, or you could type in the name of the song, and from the results you get back, it would be very easy to find the one that you want. For classical music, that doesn't work so well. More often than not, we're not just interested in a song by its name or a piece of music by its name. We're interested in the composer, perhaps, or the person who played it, or the conductor who conducted the orchestra, or in the orchestra itself. So there's lots of different things that we want to be able to search by that the traditional streaming services don't really help us with. However, there are now options that are available with the classical musician in line. A couple of the common ones that you'll find if you do a Google search would be Naxos Music Library and Idagio. Now, both of these have been built with classical music in mind, and what you'll find is when you start to search for something, you're able to search in what feels like a much more natural manner, looking for things that you recognize much more easily rather than just say the name of an album, which obviously quite often in classical music doesn't really mean an awful lot and you might not know the name of the album. And the simple reason that this is possible is because these companies have paid a lot of attention to this famous metadata that I mentioned earlier. So they've paid a lot of attention to how they categorize and classify the music so that when you come to search for it, you've got more options that are available to you. Let's then take a look at Idagio as an example. So of course, it's a streaming service. They have an app that you can download and use on your smartphone or tablet, or you can log directly into their website and play things through your computer. For $9.99, you've got unlimited access to everything in their catalog. Before going any further though, I probably think it's worth quickly mentioning that listening to things also gives you lots of options. You might think that listening to something on your phone or your computer means that you need to be listening to it through earphones or through the you know, tiny little speaker that's on your phone or your computer. However, nowadays that's not the case. You can get absolutely phenomenal Bluetooth speaker systems from many manufacturers these days. In fact, at home, I've got three of them. I've got one that I use with the TV, so to all intents and purposes, that's fixed where it is, where the TV is. I've got another one that's a little smaller, and we can take that from room to room and listen to music wherever we are in the apartment. And then I've got a third one, which is much smaller, that packs away nicely when we go on holiday, and that's great to take with us. I've put a link to some on Amazon for you to give you a, a starting point in the description below. But go to your local hi-fi or computer shop and have a look at the different brands that are on offer and see if there's something that suits your taste and your budget. Anyway, getting back to the subject of today's video. The first thing to note about services such as Idagio are that it's phenomenally easy to find the things that you're looking for, unlike when you use some of the traditional services such as Amazon or Apple. And that's because, say you want to find a particular piece played by a particular soloist, 
That's nice and easy to do. You can just type into the search bar and it'll find it for you. It will even find multiple recordings of that piece by that soloist where these exist. Alternatively, you might actually want to see what versions there are available of a different piece, be that a solo piano piece or an orchestral piece. Again, you type in the name of the piece and in no time you've got a full list of everything that's available for you. If you want to approach it in a different way, you can sort of go on a voyage of discovery from almost any point really. You can start from a composer, from a piece, from an orchestra, from a soloist, from a conductor, and you can start working through the catalogue to see what's available by that particular person or even down to things like by in a particular instrument or from a particular era. It really is a phenomenal way of discovering new things that you'd not heard before. A second great feature of this particular service is the ability to create what they call collections. And this is a bit like your own personal record collection within Idagio. So quite simply, you find a piece that you're listening to and you think, oh, that's nice, I'll keep hold of that. You can simply click the little heart symbol that's on your screen and that's saved into your collection. There's probably just one thing that's worth mentioning before we finish this off. And that's, of course, if you're worried about how you might be able to listen to these kind of things when you're, say, on a plane where there's no Wi-Fi network, then, as I mentioned earlier, they all provide you with the ability to download local copies of music that you like so that you can listen to it whenever you like without having to worry about having a network connection. So in summary, what I'd say is, you know, if you're in a family and you have lots of diverse musical tastes and you want to have a subscription that you can share between you, then you'll probably get away with something like Apple or Amazon or Spotify. Certainly there's classical music on there and you'll be able to probably find at least one version of all the major stuff in the repertoire to listen to. However, if you are really very serious about just the classical music side of things, then I'd highly recommend you investigate one of these more classical dedicated streaming services such as Naxos or Idagio. You can find other services available. If you Google them, you'll find them. I think there's one called Tidal, there's another one from Medici TV. And these are also good and worth looking at. And it's worth pointing out that they all offer free introductory periods, which is a way that you can subscribe, you can see how useful you find it and how often you're going to use it, and then make a decision later on about whether you continue and pay for that subscription each month. Finally then, if you're not already, please do remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click on that little bell icon so that you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.